Today we're at White Swan Park Municipal Campground here on Fraser Lake in central British Columbia. In this video, we're going to talk about the two main methods that we use to charge our lithium batteries in our Bigfoot travel trailer. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back and watch our video from a couple of weeks ago where I covered our Bigfoot off-grid electrical system. The main way we charge our batteries is with our solar panels up here on the roof. Come on, I'll show you. We installed four 100-watt Renogy Eclipse solar panels with high-efficiency cells made by SunPower, and we wired each of them in parallel. We mounted the solar panels down using these stainless steel brackets from AM Solar. The brackets came with a layer of 3M VHB tape on the back side that firmly bonds down to the top of the fiberglass surface here. And of course, that's really nice because that way we didn't have to drill any holes in the roof. And then over top of the brackets is a layer of Heng's roof coating, which is the same sealant that's used right from Bigfoot at the factory. And the sealant's used just to keep the weather away from the 3M tape so it doesn't break down the bond over time. The solar panel brackets also use these large black thumb screws that allow you to easily take it loose to tilt the panel up for optimal angle with the sun or just to clean underneath. And all the wires chase back to one combiner box, which is the single point where it runs through the roof. The combiner box is mounted underneath this solar panel so it shields it from the sun and the weather. All the cables are held down with these little stick down pads that have the 3M VHB tape and the same sealant on them and just a cable tie to keep it held down nicely so it doesn't flap around while you're driving. We also have a portable solar panel that we can place on the ground just when we need it. And it plugs in through this port here on the side of the trailer that we added. And it ties directly back to our solar charge controller mounted on the inside of the trailer. In addition to solar, we can also charge from our truck's alternator while we're driving. In order to do that, we had to install a lithium battery isolator and a shutoff switch. The lithium battery isolator really serves two purposes. It will control the charge current going back to the lithium batteries in the trailer by allowing them to charge for 15 minutes and then it will automatically disconnect for 20 minutes to allow the alternator time to cool. In addition to that, it operates as an isolator, isolating the lithium batteries from the starter batteries so that when the ignition is off and you're running the energy out of the lithium batteries, it isn't also depleting the energy from the starter batteries. And of course the cutoff switch does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it disables the system when not in use. Oh yeah, and there's also a 150 amp circuit breaker here between the cutoff switch and where it gets power from the starter batteries. Here at the back of the truck we've got a couple of Anderson SB250 forklift electrical connectors that we use off of some 4 aught wire. They're SB175 connectors with 1 aught wire. Does this guy know anything? To transfer the energy uh, down the frame of the truck and back to the trailer. It's got a mating connector here on the back of the truck. The other end of that charging cable terminates inside the propane compartment here. We've got another set of those Anderson connectors here to uh, plug into the trailer. That way when we're not using the system, we can unplug the cable and stow it away. And the cable was made with a little extra length, so it will still reach the truck when the trailer's unhitched. Between the safety chains, we installed a rod and some PVC tubing to help support the heavy cable while driving. From the Anderson connector I just showed you in the propane compartment, the alternator charging cables run underneath the trailer, and they enter the floor of the battery compartment here. They run through another 150 amp resettable circuit breaker and then straight into the batteries. So now let's take a look at the system performance. With the solar system turned off and relying only on the alternator charging, we're receiving about 92 amps and a little over 1200 watts just from the alternator. As far as the solar goes, we're currently getting about 184 watts or a little over 13 amps into the batteries. Now that doesn't seem like a lot off a 400 watt system, but it is mid-September and we're in central British Columbia where the sun is kind of low in the sky. During better conditions when you're further south or the sun is directly overhead, we could easily exceed 400 watts with the system. 
So now if you look at the combined output between the alternator charging and the solar system, we're receiving a little over 112 amps or a little over 1500 watts. Not too shabby. We hope that you enjoyed this video and that it gets you thinking about how to design your own system. This was not intended to be a how-to video or even a suggestion on what to do. This was just what we did and what's worked well for us for the last four years. I'll put links in the video description for many of the components used. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button. It helps our channel grow. We have many more of these RV modification videos yet to come, so if you like this kind of content, you may want to consider subscribing. Until then, thanks for watching.